Hi, my name is Bertie Matthews from Matthews Cotswold Flower, and I'm here today in Elaine's kitchen uh, for a baking lesson to celebrate the launch uh, of the Matthews Sourdough Kit, which is what we see in front of us. So we've got some awesome range of flowers here, and we've got the uh, scraper, we've got the tin, and we've got some bannertons, which is somewhere over there, I think. And, um, and today what we're gonna be doing is Elaine's gonna be taking through some recipes using these flowers, how to make the starters. Uh, and I'm going to be uh, the student today, and Elaine is the master. <laughs> and hopefully, uh, we've recorded this video so that anybody buying the sourdough kit or any of the flowers uh, can pick up some tips of how to use these awesome flowers. I want to show you are these two very beautiful starters okay mm -hmm. so in the box I have included all the details for making a starter using either the Churchill's flower or our wholemeal flour okay. okay also got the most perfect beautiful little jar which is what these are and one of the reasons we use these is because of the size and it stops you keeping too much yeah there's an assumption as a sourdough baker that you have to have these huge amounts of starter and you don't you only need a very small amount okay and what i've got to show you as well by comparison just so that you can see the difference this starter is made and fed with your strong white bread flour yeah okay the one in the white and black bag and it looks quite different you'll see the texture looks quite different yeah. so what i want you to do is so that you can see is just have a stir and a listen um, and we can let the camera come in and see what you're experiencing okay. to feel the magic yeah this okay. is my spoon which one should i start with the start stone with ground this one so that start with the start with the white because i think white. you're going to see quite a difference so you just okay. want to stir it yeah yeah you can hear it sort of crackle a little bit nice and smooth but it is i found this flower really interesting because it's very creamy yeah that's it makes a really, a really good really, really creamy good starter so if by comparison just leave the spoon in there that's fine if by comparison just for the camera you stir that one oh wow it's, it's almost sort of like more it's a bit sort of bubbly lighter that's definitely creamy yeah and this is the difference just between two strong white bread flowers. This is what I keep saying to people. Be you can't assume that two flowers are the same just because they have the same name. Well, it's, I mean, a lot of it is genuinely the way it's produced and what grain it's coming from. This has got a higher percentage of protein in it, quality and quantity. This might be lower, um, does use a bit more sort of UK wheat, but you've got to remember they they're coming, might be coming from completely different areas of the country. But you, if you can't see that i'm telling you being here you can hear the difference and the whole point of churchill is we've you know created it for sourdough baking and that lovely creamy texture is brilliant okay and so now, by comparison now we're going to experience something different you're going to love this so don't keel over with joy <laughs> so this is the stone ground yeah. whole grain or uh, whole listen <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lovely. Isn't it beautiful? And look at the texture in it. It's and just that's all thing. that brown and German there, whereas obviously yeah. with the whiter flowers, you don't have that. But the nutritional profile of this is going to be far greater using a whole grain or wholemeal flour. So the reason we've got both is to show you that you can make starters from different flowers, but they also do quite different jobs. So actually, if you want a more sour flavour, go with the wholemeal because the wholemeal flour gives you a more sour sourdough. Also, it gives you a more firm dough. So they do actually do different jobs. So they're both brilliant and they both work and you've got details of both of them. But I would highly recommend you try making starters from both flours just so that you can see what they do. Yeah. Rolling. What we're gonna do now is make some dough. Okay. Okay? So we're going to use uh, basically the recipe that we've got in the box, yeah. which is uh, the Churchill's master recipe. Um, 
we've got our two starters made as per the cards that are in the box. So you're going to use the white starter made with Churchill's and I'm going to use the wholemeal starter made with the beautiful whole grain flour. Okay? Awesome. The first thing we want is 50 grams of starter in your bowl. Okay. Look at that beauty. Boo. <laughs> Apologies, you can hear my dog walking around the kitchen. So, 50 grams of the good stuff. And I tend to just leave the spoon in the bowl. Okay. Right, back to zero. And then we want, you don't have to do this in a particular order, but this is the order I always make my dough. So we want 350 grams of water. And this is a perfect amount of water with your flour. It works really nicely. We're just going to give it a little swish up. I've left my spoon in the starter. Yes, and it's just honestly, Bertie. I know you call Amateur me. Hour. I know you call me your sourdough mum, but you know. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of a. Okay, just a little squish, and then back to zero. Okay, so mix it around a little bit. Okay. So we've got our lovely creamy Churchill white flour. Five hundred grams. Okay. Okay. Again, don't worry if it goes a bit over; it's not a problem. So Churchill strong white, five hundred grams. Yeah. Yes, please. And then we want salt. I only use a teaspoon of salt in my bread because I don't like a lot of salt. People can use more, and it's pink Himalayan salt doesn't have to be you can use any kind of table salt look at that <laughs> <laughs> right easiest thing to do to start mixing it is take it off your scales and all we want to do at this point is get the water through the flour it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth but we're just giving everything a nice first mix I tend to do this quite slowly and mindfully as much because I enjoy it, but also because I don't want it all over my kitchen. Fair enough. But as you've noticed from the way I do things, I like things clean and tidy. Exactly. Tidy as you go. Okay, so we're just mixing. All you're doing really the is getting it. the water through the flour. So don't any, you don't want to leave too much that's too dry. I then get a bowl scraper and tidy it all down. You know, it's just the habits you form. So I think yours looks a bit better than mine, but that's not really surprising. We have to take into account I've made it many, many more times. Okay. Plus, mine's bigger than yours. It's not about the size. This is very true. It's about the outcome of your dough. So all we want, yeah, it's just, and also I'm, you know, I'm cleaning around your bowl because I can't help it. I almost think you're getting a little bit more under, under than I was. Possibly, but this is all it needs to be, okay? It doesn't need to be any more than that. Nobody needs to put in any more effort than that. So here's our doughs. We're going to cover them with a shower cap and we'll leave it to sit for about an hour. Okay, but could an hour to how long? It doesn't matter if it's. 45 minutes it doesn't matter if it's three hours all it okay. needs to do is rest it doesn't need to dictate your life so it doesn't need to be any more than that here we are back with our dough so like i said typically we'd want this to have rested for a bit however we don't have that time today but when you make it just follow the steps in the recipe and give it a chance to rest okay so we're going to start working with this let me show you to start off with and then you can follow along okay Okay, and this is not like a normal dough. We don't need to knead it. You don't need to turn it out. I do everything in the bowl. You, you, you don't need any of this heavy stuff for 10 minutes. I'll show you what we're going to do. We're just going to lift and over. I tend to use just my thumb and forefingers and we're going to lift and over. And at this point, it's not very stretchy yet, especially because we haven't let it sit. But anyway, at this point, it won't be very stretchy and it will be as sticky as it would be. Later on, it won't be this sticky. So okay. keep going. 
So reaching around and sending it to the other side of the dough, yeah? That's it. As you get further along in this process, what you'll be able to do is actually stretch it up and over more. But because it hasn't had that time to rest yet, it won't do. But what you'll be able to see is that it's coming into a smooth ball. So you can see the brown bits in your yeah, sourdough. Yeah, you can really see the speckles from my wholemeal starter in mine. Whereas obviously mine is... See. Yours has got the white, white all the way through it, so yours is just nice and creamy. And all we're going to want it to do is just come to a point where it's in a ball. And I can't stipulate this enough. When you do this after it's rested, you will not have all the sticky dough. You will find it stretchier and it will become smoother. It won't end up as sticky as this is. Okay. Okay. I think I'm there. What do you think? I think that looks fine. What we would then be doing is covering it again with a shower cap, letting it rest, and then do this again about three more times. And then you start to have your nice, beautiful, smooth ball of dough that you'll leave overnight. Awesome. So I started making these at five o'clock last night. Okay. Okay. So I've, look, I've looked after them. They've proved overnight and now they're ready. And the next step is for us to get them into the banneton. Okay. okay? Um, so we're going to do it with these first and then move on to some others. So these doughs are all 100% Churchill's white flour. Great. Okay. And made to my standard recipe amounts, which everyone's going to be able to find on their recipe cards. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And then you are going to do it. <laughs> okay, great. So you've got two okay. Churchill here. Yeah. So these two are exactly the same. And you'll see they're nice and lively. Um, so we've got our balloton ready. It's already got a bit of rice flour in it, but just to be safe, it's nice just to add in a little extra. So I don't turn my dough out onto the counter. I do it all in the bowl. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the process is going to be, I want you to lift and fold it, but it needs to have a bit of tension. You're not going to crush it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me show you. I'm just going to lift some small pieces up. Look at that. And all we want to do is tuck it round so that we bring it into a nice ball. Look at all that. Oh, the beautiful Look bubbles. Look at all that. That's all the life in there. So between my fabulous starter and your fabulous flower, the perfect partnership. So go round enough until you feel confident and comfortable enough that you can hand over it, turn it out into your hand. Beautiful, and you're just and then taking you're a little pinch of time. you're very gently going to put it in there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put mine back in there for now because we're going to do something else. And why, and why do you choose rice flour to go into the banneton? Why specifically rice flour? Did you say uh, rice Because flour? it's gluten free. Yeah. Because it's not porous. Okay. It will stop the dough from sticking to the banneton. But one of the beauties of these, these brought from bannetons, which is the reason why we've got them in the box, is they stick so much less. Mm. So compared to the cane ones, I've been so impressed with these because the, the doughs come out really easily. Yeah. So you don't need a huge amount of rice flour. You don't need to over prep them. You can just whack some in before you use it and in goes the dough and they work really nicely. And then when you finish with them and you've turned the dough out, all they need to do is just sit on the counter to dry out before they go back in the cupboard. Easy. But they're, they're, they're spot on, they're really good. So, so they're gonna be... <laughs> Getting how far down before I take a little pinch? Yeah, let me see. So about okay, there? Yep. Yeah. And then just... That's it. Right, further across. Further across, okay. So you want to tuck it. What are you doing all that for? Just pick up a bit and go. Get stuck in. That's it. Don't tickle it, but don't also squash it. So that's it. Up and across. And you can see it kind of cleans the bowl as it goes. You might tuck it and you over want to a take bit it, more. You want to take it, it all the way to the other side. Yeah, put it a bit tighter because you want to know that you're going to be able to pick that up. Okay, I see. Because you can sort of just feel that tension yeah, and then it. you're putting it over. You actually couldn't squash it if you tried because it's got too much life in it. And you can feel at the point where you've got it in a nice tension. So I would say you're just about there. Give it one more to get that bubble. And this is about 14 hours. About 14 for, hours? For proving, these are about 12 hours. Okay, 12 so hours. So then... You can put your hand over the top. Hand over the top. Yeah. Like this. Hang on. Look where your middle is. Yeah. Yeah. Hand over the top. Get it in Just the middle tip ball. it and then gently over into there. Okay. That's it. Look at 
that beauty. Lovely. Because it's quite clean the way it comes away. And all I do is just whack a bit of extra rice flour across the top and down the sides. Okay? So that's your first one done. Beautiful. You're now going to do that a couple more times, but with different doughs, so you can see how differently they feel. Okay, so we get the shower cap back on. And that then goes into the fridge to firm up. So often there's a question about why is it going into the fridge? It's going into the fridge partly to develop flavour, but also to make it easier so that when you turn it out, it doesn't spread. Yeah. So that it helps you to be able to score it. But also so that you can manage your time so that you're not at the whim of the dough. So you can stick it in the fridge and bake it when you're ready. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna come back for the other ones in just a second. Okay. Gonna do exactly the same with this one, but you're gonna feel the difference in this. And you'll know why, because you know the flour. Yeah. But this dough is half white spelt, half the stone ground, strong whole grain. Yeah. Okay. And so this is gonna be a lot spongier and as you pull it and feel it, you'll hear the dough, you'll hear the texture in the dough and you'll feel quite a difference in it. So I want you to do exactly the same again, pull it into that ball and into the banneton. Okay? okay, great. So that's ready to go. So this is a <clears throat> this is a 50% stone ground whole grain and a 50% white spelt. And you can already feel the difference. It's amazing the different textures of these. Spongy is a good word. I and think. you can see the texture down it. Okay, so what you'll find with this as well is it takes a lot less handling to bring it into the ball. Yeah, I mean, that was almost so half. Much, yeah, because it's so much firmer. Okay? But in terms of. And look, something to see is look at all the texture in that, and you can actually see the life in the dough. Okay. And in, in terms of nutritional profile for this sort of dough, you've got that 100% whole grain and 50% of, of it. And then obviously you've got the spelt, so you're getting a much wider nutritional profile. But it's amazing, it's, it literally was half the time, wasn't yeah. it? Half the One of the reasons that I put these two together is because the white spelt lightens up the whole grain. Yeah. So if you were doing 100% wholemeal one, it's gonna be so much denser, which is also nice and yeah. a lot of flavor. But by putting in the white spelt, that lovely fine white spelt, you're lightening up the loaf. It's a bit of a best of both worlds. Yeah. Okay, so this is gonna go in the fridge as well. The bowl, my bowls always then go in the sink, water in them so that you can soak off some of the dough, otherwise it dries like concrete. Okay? That's a nightmare. This dough, you're gonna find stickier. Sticky. Because this is half Churchill's and half Cotswold Crunch. I see, yeah, you can see the okay. of wheat flakes in there. So you can already see it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something different with this later but I want this in there in preparation. Okay. Okay, so there is your challenge. You're gonna so, feel the difference so, in the stove. So, so this will be a lot stickier than the first, just Churchill. Yeah. Okay. And lively. Uh, oh God, yeah. Look at that. And what you'll see is, as you're doing it, it feels like it deflates, which often scares people, but it's fine. If your dough is strong enough, it doesn't matter. It's all gonna come back. So again, these have all had the same proving time. They've all had about 12 yeah. hours. So yeah. they've all got our little churchy starter. So our starter made with our Churchill's flour. What, what melted wheat flakes? Yes. And we like the smell too. Oh, the smell's delicious. So into a nice firm ball. But a bit more than that. A bit more? Yeah. We don't be doing things by halves. Absolutely not. <laughs> not in Elaine's kitchen. <laughs> no, here. I'm in charge. Exactly. I've been to your mill and you're in charge and now I'm in charge. That's fine by me. Right, and into there. Right. Too much? Okay. Too aggressive? Yeah, I'm really pleased that you did that so that we can tell people not to. But do you think it's because of the passion? Obviously, <laughs> obviously it's a serious passion. But when you're turning in a bit more gentle rather than a poof. But why, so why, why would you not do that? Just so people you don't, but you've already pulled it together and you know it's a firm dough, but you don't actually want to just smash any life out of it altogether. Yeah, even if you're having a bad day. Uh, this is true, but if you're having a bad day, don't make sourdough. Yeah, no, okay. that's not true actually. Make sourdough, but let the sourdough ease the nightmare of your day away oh, so you that can. you go calmer in the therapy. Okay. fine. <laughs> Not a Hawaiian dance. <laughs> Sink. There we go. Sink. Thank you very much. Into fridge. This is a different mission. 
okay with this one we're going to use the loaf tin uh -huh. so we turn it into a different looking loaf when it's baked so this is a mix so we've got some churchills some whole grain uh, the whole meal and dark rye flour mm. in it so this it will be stickier it's also a bigger dough because we need it just slightly bigger for our beautiful tins yeah and what i'm going to do actually just to show you let's just abuse this dough again so you can see what you're going to do because with this we want it done slightly differently so with this what obviously it's more spread out i'm going to pull the dough let's make sure you can see into a line okay so we're going to pull it across all the way then 180 degrees round and pull that all the way back across over there so that you're making a nice sausage of dough and then when you pick it up you're going to lay it lay it in there so that you've got the smooth side up no aggression a little bit of passion lay. so lay it but what I would also say is because we then leave it to prove again even if you kind of splodge it it's not too bad yeah because it will it will spread out and it will start to find its own form again well when we were doing these recipes when we were putting together this box of these different items yeah everything has been picked for a reason absolutely and this tin i mean explaining sort to a new home baker the purpose of using this tin with this particular flour how would you describe that the beauty of a tin is you don't need to worry too much about how the dough holds itself together and how the loaf is going to bake so one of the fears that sourdough bakers have is about turning out dough and it's spreading or not holding its shape so if you are concerned about that loaf tins are great also it means that the bread fits in your toaster which is often helpful but with this one because this is a sticky dough from the rye flour yeah and people might be worried about how you pull it together how it's going to hold itself in a freeform loaf it oh look at that it means that the, the tin helps you have to look at that we need a shot of this underneath. i wish you could smell it underneath you need to see all of that texture oh wow yeah look at that so we've got rye churchill and whole, whole grain so remember we're pulling it into a line and then we're going to turn it all the way around so cool basically you want a nice sausage of dough make the sausage people indeed pull it over and am i still pulling it over to the other end or to yeah. the middle across right across is good see how it deflates yeah okay that's as much from the rye flour does that and sits sticky yeah yeah okay now okay so let's, turn let's have a, a bit more. another one into the middle yeah turn it all the way around start in the middle do you think or whatever you think that's it get it into the middle you can hear it you can hear the sponginess bit more in the middle one more yeah and what you can do if you want to if you want to just pull in the sides so you loosen it up if you don't feel confident with it yet you can just pull it across still that's confidence that right. is confidence right there okay so you then need to have your hand over it okay Perhaps tip it into your hand. hand and your challenge then you might need to pull because it's a sticky dough it's going to be to lay but because of the way that it is you can probably put your other hand over the top no because you want this on the top oh you want this on the top okay yeah so i could swap hands you could probably yeah because of the way this dough is oh my god <laughs> it's sticking be brave and then in all the way over that's it fab okay now it's sticking to my hands just don't panic and it's gone there we go and like i said it will fill up and it will fill the pan again let's have a look at that okay so so this is a bowl of coarse semolina so if you've got doughy hands stick it in the semolina and use it to rub them off amazing this was a tip that i was given by someone else which absolutely brilliant and then you can get most of the dough off and into the bin before it goes down your sink so this now needs to sit on the counter this one doesn't go in the fridge okay, okay? so it needs to sit on the counter to prove again until it grows up the pan and you're leaving this one out as opposed to the other ones out yes yeah, because this is in the pan it, it, we don't need it to firm up we're not doing the same thing as the ones that are in the fridge 
So this can sit on the counter and it will depend on the temperature in your kitchen how long it takes to grow up again. So here's one we did earlier. <laughs> this is our very beautiful Cotswold Crunch. Yeah. So this is 100% Cotswold Crunch. So this was the stickiest of sticky doughs and a nice big, big dough. So I've done exactly the same with how I've made it and it's all on the recipe card. You've got all the details there. And I've put this into this pan at six o'clock this morning. Okay. Okay, so it's now nearly 11 and it's been an average of about 20 degrees in the kitchen. So that's why it's showing you it's taken about five hours to grow up again. So if it was warmer, it would be faster. If it was colder, it would be slower, as is the nature of sourdough. And, the, and the, okay. I, th I think this is why it's really important to have one of these little temperature gauges. I mean, look at that, just show you that. I mean, they probably, probably don't cost very much, but just to have it there. And I, I've got a few of these, and literally there's something like seven pounds online. Yeah. But what you've got, which is really, really useful, is you can see what the temperatures have been across the last 24 hours. And one of the things that I always say to people is the best thing you can have with sourdough is a, a thermometer in your kitchen. It's the, it changed my entire sourdough baking. Once you can understand the difference the temperature in your kitchen makes to your dough, you're flying. So it's really, really useful to have. And then you can also plan it a bit easier because you know what the temperature is <laughs> going to do. Look at your, your high, for example, is 32 oh, and low is was, 19. I, yeah, I know because that covers from yesterday. Be, As, that's why you need it because you're going to have completely different results. Whereas the one you? that I've got over there showed that last night the dough was sitting at between 24, it was between 24 and 25 degrees. So it went whoosh yeah. overnight. So it's really, really useful. So this is going to sit out until it gets like that. And now that this is virtually at the level with the pan, we'll be able to bake that soon. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Level with the pan, five hours it's been in there at 22 degrees. Yes. This is the dough that you put together and put in the banneton earlier for me. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is the half Churchill's, half Cotswold Crunch. Okay? Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn it out and cut it up and turn it into rolls. Okay. So this is, as per the recipe card that's in the box, what I will say is, because we are shorter on time, because we're doing this as a baking class this morning, this is still going to be quite wobbly, this dough. So if you've had it in the fridge for a lot longer, it's going to be a lot firmer. So how don't long, get worried. How long should people have it in the fridge for? I would leave it for at least three hours. Three hours. For us, it's been like 30 minutes. So um, don't get scared that it's a bit sticky and it's spreading out a bit. So we want a bit of flour on the surface. And what you're going to do, is I want you just to tip it out. Okay, what, so you want my hand a, over the top or no? Even that, just gently tip it onto the table so we've got a nice dome of dough. How like gentle that. was that? Perfect. <laughs> Leave this on the counter so it dries out, ready for next time. You don't need to brush it out or do anything like that. And then you take your dough cutter you've got in the box. And what you're going to do is cut it into, six, uh, into eight wedges. Eight wedges? Yeah. Okay. So just by eye, Okay. That's it. Go across, right across the middle. Cut right down. That's it. Right down. Nice. Okay. Nice. Look at that. Right. Okay. Now, what do you think? Half again and half, half again. Half again, then half again. Without elbowing me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And half again. Half again on each one. So they can be done by eye. Doesn't need to be anything too exact. This is the scraper. simplest way you're ever going to make sourdough rolls. And you can do this with any of the recipes. And what we're going to do is just lay them on our prepared tray and then they're going to go in to our cold oven. You can do it from the preheated oven, you've got directions for both of them. Do you know what these look like? What's they that? look like cheese. Yes, and perfect to eat with cheese. <laughs> and they are going to go into our cold oven, mm -hmm. turn it on and you're going to have rolls. In 22 minutes and one of the beauties of this with making rolls instead of loaves is you don't need to wait for it to cool down before you eat them. This is the dough that you put into this banneton earlier made with wholemeal flour and white spelt flour. Okay. And what we're going to do is that is going to go into the pan to be scored to go into the oven. Awesome. Okay so again because we're short on time with you being here, you know, 
it's not going to be as firm as it would be if you had it in the fridge for a lot longer. Okay? So when you turn it out, it might not hold its shape as well as it would have done if it had been in the fridge for a good three, six, ten hours. So what I'm going to want you to do is you're going to have your hand underneath. I use lightweight enamel pans to bake all of my bread. You're going to take, good aren't they? Yeah. And put the paper over the top. Okay. Put the pan over the top of that. And then you're going to turn the whole thing out so that you turn the dough into the pan. It's almost idiot proof. Now watch if I mess it up. Famous last words. <laughs> Okay, so just put the paper over the, and parchment paper I reuse time and again. That over the top, okay, and all the way over. That's it. So you're not tipping the dough in, you're turning it all the way over. Here we go. <gasps> Look at that dough. That's so dough. satisfying. Look what we have created. Right. What I want you to do now then is score it. Okay. And what would you like me to draw? I don't want you to draw anything. I just no? want you to do some nice lines. Thank you very much. Okay. So you're going to come from the outside into the middle, okay, you can do five or six, and nice and firm, so don't tickle it, you're not just scratching the surface, you want to go about a centimetre So why don't you show me one, right. so we can see how the master does it. Okay, so we're going to go like that. Okay. So you see how far down we are, you want a nice depth to it, okay, okay. so you can start to see the texture inside. And then this young Padawan will... Yeah, so, so I start from the here. outside in. Uh, you're about there, okay. So that's it. Be, be bold. That's it. Yeah. Again, because this hasn't been in the fridge for very long, it's dragging a little bit. But when you've got a firmer dough, it won't drag like that. Okay. This is a bit that's like bayonet training. Oh, but it's softer. A, okay. A lot, lot less aggression. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. That's it. And the whole point of scoring is you're encouraging the dough to grow and open so it is a necessary thing you can bake a loaf without scoring it but this will give it more growth and people get very scared of scoring because they think the dough is going to collapse it actually doesn't matter if it does if it does collapse as long as it bakes well it doesn't matter so i think sometimes the fear is you know when i've done this before is oh god you know it's going to lose its shape or no. it's going to collapse in on itself am i missing one if you want to do that I, th I think we're looking good. That okay. looks symmetrical. As long as your dough is strong enough, it will be fine. It will bounce back up. So I bake everything with the lid on. <coughs> lid on full time. And because the oven's already been on, it's going to go into a preheated oven, which is a 220 fan in my oven, 240 if you've got a non-fan assisted, and it will be in there for 50 minutes. Okay. Wow, here we go, the finished article. Thank you so much, Elaine, I've, really, I've loved it. I've You've loved done it. brilliantly. So what, I, what, have, what have- I give you top marks. Oh, thanks. I didn't think I was gonna get that. Um, as you can see, we've had a very, very busy time, which is why we have bright red faces. <laughs> uh, we've had lots of ovens on, lots of activity, but what we've done is make everything that you'll find on the recipe cards in the box. So using all of the flowers, we've got our beautiful Churchill's master recipe loaf. I mean, look, look at the shape of that. <laughs> uh, we've got our lovely loaf, which is including Churchill's, our rye flour and our wholemeal flour. We've got our 100% Cotswold crunch. No one's taking that home with them today. We've got our beautifully scored loaf. I mean, Bertie scored both of these today, first time scoring. Beautifully scored loaf, which is made with the wholemeal flour and the white spelt flour, and our lovely rolls, of which half are missing because we've eaten them, which was made with our Churchill's and our Cotswold Crunch. Uh, you've seen our starters as well. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching. I hope you've seen us in action. I hope that you will enjoy the box, you'll enjoy the flowers, and I hope you've loved it. I loved it. I have loved it. And anyone um, watching at home, it's super easy. It's made even more easy because Elaine has made these incredible recipe cards. All the instruments are there for you. And Elaine, where can people go to, to speak to you, to ask you questions, to find out more? You'll find my website anyway on the bottom of the recipe cards. So you can find me at foodboardsourdough.com and from there you can email me, you can find my social media things, but really it's just Foodbox Sourdough. Um, and ask questions. Please do ask me anything that you need to. 
but we really just we just hope you love it yeah so on behalf of elaine and i and the whole of the matthews family and the mill um good luck to all the uh, cotswold flower babies <laughs>